Okay, today what we're playing with is the uh, speed controls on the Bamboo Lab J1. And down here, let's see if I can get in closer on that. Hopefully it'll focus. If I get in even closer yet. Alright. Getting there. Too close. So basically this over here is showing the speed. I've got set at 50%. So this is as slow as I can slow the thing down to. And it's already booking. Um, basically if I touch that again, brings it up here and they consider this 50% speed as the silent. Now that says 100. Oops. Holy jeez. Okay, now we're back to standard. This is 100% speed. You want to be able to see what it's doing, I guess. And you can see you don't always have to use the printer with the, the big uh, AMS unit. In fact, I normally print with just the rear spool holder, print in one color. Holy crap, that thing's going crazy. Alright, so if we go back down here again, the next one they call a Sport, and it's going to be 40% faster, so they call it 140% total. There we go. Let's see if it switches up to it. Oh yeah. It's got everything on the table shaking. Let's see if we can pull back even further. Cleaned its nozzle. And the fastest speed it's got is the bottom one, which they call ludicrous. It's 166%, so 66% faster than normal. Holy crap. It's gonna have that phone a rocking. I think I better take that down. Got everything on this table shaking. It'll be interesting to see how crappy it looks <laughs> going that fast, going that insanely quick. We've got um, got the three color one that I did earlier at just the normal speed without going to ludicrous. If you want to see what the uh, other windows look like while this thing goes crazy, let's, uh, let's pull in here a little bit more. If I go back on this button, this is the window that I started at. So in this window you can adjust your nozzle. You can see what your nozzle temperature is and you can also adjust it. You can see what your bed temperature is. You can adjust it. You can fool with the extruder. Can turn the light on and off. It's telling me what the fan speed is, and here it's telling me the speed. If I go back one more, this is the opening window, saying so we're 51% done with this project. And here's a normal screen. So you've got your stop, your pause. You can turn the light off and on, and it gives you the basic stats of information that you need over here. So to get back into the, the speed one, if you want, you can just tap on that. And come over here to this. Let's uh, let's take it from ludicrous back down to silent. So this is mainly just to show you guys some of the different uh, speeds and how the thing reacts when it's really booking. I'm going to move this camera back even further. So we can get more of the the whole thing in the picture. So you, can, you can see it's got the single roll mounted in the back loop. You don't have to have the big AMS part set up. And of course, you can still do uh, color swaps by layer at any time. You can stop and pause and change the filaments. You really only need the AMS if you're doing embedded colors and things. 
All right, let's uh, at least go back up to standard speed. I have found this touchscreen to be not consistent. Sometimes you can touch it and it does absolutely nothing, and other times it senses where your finger is going while you're like a half an inch away from it. It's, uh, I mean, it's better than it's better than a lot of the touch screens, but it's it's not perfect. And what is in this world, especially in a low cost machine? The screen is very small. The only time the small screen was really a problem for me was when I was. Um, um, what code was I entering? I forget now. Anyway, I had to enter a bunch of numbers and letters, and they come up on the screen, and they're itsy bitsy. It's like if you're on a small um, cell phone trying to text and do things with your finger. And the fact that the screen wasn't always responsive didn't make it easier. And in most cases, I actually have to have to touch above, just just slightly above the thing that I want it to uh, respond to. Now, as far as um, while we're waiting on this thing, uh, spare parts, the website lists the spare parts for this machine, and the prices are extremely reasonable. But the only problem that I'm seeing, and hopefully this is just because it's a new machine and everyone's buying them, is that basically none of the parts are available. I mean, uh, you can get the whole new, get the hot end and tip and all that kind of thing. It was just a few bucks, or all of the. Uh, tubes for the thing because they want you to replace them like every six rolls of filament because you can they wear out and you get more drag and all that stuff's out of stock it comes with the textured PEI sheet which I do not care for I mean care for it with a purse ether out I like the smooth PEI sheet and they sell them dirt cheap but they're out of stock they don't have any so hopefully that'll change because I mean it just came out so everybody's getting it and everyone's getting their backup supplies. At least I'm hoping that's what's going on. We'll see. Okay, I'm exactly nine minutes into the print right now. Let's uh, go up to sport mode. Okay, we just shifted to sport mode and that was 40% faster than the normal one, or what they call is 140%. And let's see, we're shifting about midway right into the portholes on the on the bow of the ship. So I'll let it finish to the top of the porthole and then we'll shift back to ludicrous. That way we'll have, when we're looking at this part when it's completely done, we'll have a way of uh, knowing where we did changes at and we'll see what how it looks. Uh, right now I'm just printing in PLA of course and this is just a gray color where this thing's moving because the, this table bounces a lot. Okay, so top them, let's go to Ludicrous. You know. Oh, what else can I tell you? Um, any, every time you start a print, it, uh, it goes through a whole system of, of checks, uh, pressure nozzle for the, you know, bed leveling, pressure nozzle, all this kind of stuff, and I don't see any way to save that time. It takes five minutes. Even if you don't select those items, when you start to print, they're in green and you can touch them and turn them off. The machine still seems to sit there for the full five minutes before it starts printing. It basically goes through different modes where it warms the uh, hot end up a little bit, I think to get the boogers and everything that's hanging off of it. Then it cools that hot end down a little bit and cleans it again. Um, then it does some uh, bed probing and leveling. Then it comes back over and does some purging, which I think has to do with the flow advance. It's sensing the pressure flow in the nozzle, so it knows how much filament to extrude at what speed. I don't know. I don't really understand how all of it works. It's all new. And um, let's see how it's doing now. It's doing the big rear window, and again we're at the, the faster speed. And when it's doing overhangs right now, it's supposed to slow down. The fan's been running pretty much uh, full the whole time, which normally on a print you'll hear the fan turning off and on. In this case, it's running, I think, because we're going so super fast. What was I going to say? Okay, so yeah, it's going to take about five minutes to start a print. But even if that, 
it's still three times faster than my uh, Prusa MK3S even when you throw the five minutes in. Now of course it wouldn't be if you were just doing a print that only takes five minutes on the Prusa because <laughs> it wouldn't have even started. But I'm talking about any you know normal length of time print, anything over a half an hour you're going to save time. And the longer the print on the Prusa, like the nine hour body print that I did, which this thing does in three hours, really makes a big difference in how quickly it can uh, do it. Um, I'm running completely off the SD card. I'm not connected to the cloud. I'm not going up to any of the internet servers or any of those functions. Everything was uh, done on their slicer on my laptop computer, which is super old. I mean, it goes back to being a Windows 7. Of course, it's been upgraded to Windows 10. When Windows uh, 11 came along, I decided not to upgrade to it right away. I wanted to see what people thought of it first. Nobody's really thrilled about it, so I can't see any reason to upgrade to it. But my point was, it's an old computer. It doesn't have a lot of power, and yet it, it runs the slicer just fine. All the things you want to do. I took a... Um, I took a Benchy, in fact I took this Benchy file, put it in the slicer, and did uh, four, four different colors, did as many changes as you can think of the outside of the boat, the portholes, the window frames, the door frames, inside of the cabin, outside of the cabin, made all these things different colors, kept switching them around, and um, it basically took what would be well, if you were trying to do this Benchy really clean, it'd be a 43-minute print. And if you're doing it on their standard fast one, it's like 13 to 14 minutes. And we've been up to Ludicrous, so it would have been a lot quicker if we had stayed at Ludicrous all the way. But my point is, once you've added all those color changes into it, because every time you do a color change, you have to cut it, retract the filament, puts the new one in, uh, purges the head, blows the booger on there, does the uh, white block, you know, where it builds up a block next to it for extruding and stuff. I think it turned into like an eight-hour print with all of the color changes that I put in it. So it, uh, doing full-color prints, if they're really sophisticated ones, can take a long time. Yeah, let's, uh, let's go back to uh, standard speed, which is still really quick because at standard speed this was like a 13 minute benchy because it's doing the stack so we're finishing up that'd be interesting here and we're coming up on uh, so I started at 210 is 224 14 sitting in about 14 minutes because of all our speed changes up and down and all around so we didn't really gain anything Except we, uh, you know, screwed with it as much as possible so you guys could see how all this stuff would look like. So obviously it's finished up here. We'll get to where I can get around to the front here. And it brought it forward. So you can see it did, uh, did an okay job on the bottom for running as fast as it did. I mean, you can read it. You can see it was a little bit of under extrusion because it was going so dang fast when it did the bottom part. Yeah, we can see the speed changes. See those uh, lines every now and then? And remember we did one uh, right in the middle of the portholes and then right at the top of the portholes. Maybe we can see that on the, on the body better every time we did a speed change. But you'll notice that uh, there isn't... I'm not cleaning off any little strangly bits or anything like that. Everything is pretty clean. I mean, it's actually ridiculously clean and good considering how fast we were running, how quickly we we're having it to uh, go. Let's see, uh, is this bigger than the, than the three color? No, they're the same. This was the three color one that uh, they give you on the... Um, on the SD card that comes with it and it's just changed by layer so it's not complicated. See if you were going to make it complicated you'd have this whole uh, this whole area maybe leave this gray but then just this part around here maybe at least make that yellow let's say and then the portholes let's uh, make the portholes red and the window frames and door frames let's make them red. You get it to where 
it prints a little bit and then it has to switch back to the other color to do that and then has to switch back. So you get all these switch backs and forth and that's going to change something from being a, a 14 minute print into a 8 or 9 hour print or longer depending on how complicated you want to make the color changes. How many times it has to uh, change back and forth. Anyway, I find it really impressive that something can print that stupid fast and still come out that good. I mean, for prototyping parts, if you're designing toys like I do, I've done thousands of toys and consider they all have 20 to 30 parts, to save that much time to see if the part fits right and looks right before you try to print it in quality mode, I could just be printing these things in ludicrous mode just as a proof of concept and save time, which is kind of what I hope to do. So. That's all this was. It was just a little heads up for you guys that haven't got one of these or are maybe thinking about the machine. Um, still really impressed with it. Again, let's see how it holds up over time. They just came out. We don't. It doesn't have an old track record. The company does though, but everything is so well built. There's no slop anywhere. Everything is just really sturdy. The build quality is, is insane. The price is low. Hopefully they'll start actually selling them for the $2.99 price for just the printer since I think most of us don't want or need the AMS unit which comes with it. In fact, if any of you want an AMS unit, you're willing to pay shipping and, and for the unit, I've got one out there that I'll probably never use again. If I do use it again, it'll just be as a test to find out uh, how well it works or how complicated it can make something. I'm just not into wasting that much filament and all those color changes you end up with a a box of filament that's twice the size of the the main piece that you're trying to print. <laughs> so there you have it.